Hello, Joel Lindstrom here, and I have a answer to a question from the Power Users Forum for you. So in this question, Radasamek asks if I can provide him an example of using Fetch XML for Flow to do something with a list of records. And specifically, he's got this entity called uh, Board Members that is a child of opportunity. So an opportunity, you've got multiple board members. Each of those is actually a user with a different role and he wants to be able to send them all a meeting invite. So there's some details he doesn't give, such as do you want it to be one meeting invite that includes everybody, or do you want it to be a separate meeting invite for each person? Uh, but what we're gonna talk about is how would you do this with Flow, specifically the capability to use Fetch XML to do it. And this is one of the, my favorite things about the current environment connector. So first of all, Let's go into Power Automate. The first thing you'd want to do is create your flow from a solution. And why do you want to use a solution? Why don't you want to use a solution, I would say? Actually, the reason is because solutions are Microsoft's preferred method of application lifecycle management, or ALM. And so by using a solution, I've created a solution called my base solution here. By using a solution, you can move not just single flows and apps between environments, but you can do them together because most things, for example, you've got your board members entity, you've got this flow, you've got a number of things, you wanna move them together. It also works very well with Azure DevOps for source control. So I'm going to go add a new flow to the solution and I'll tell you why you wanna add it from a solution. There's a special connector for common data service called common data service current environment. And that's what you want if you wanna use Fetch XML. So you might be tempted to use the Dynamics connector or the use the one that just called Common Data Service. Do not do that. You want to search here for Common Data Service and find the one that's actually the second. It's really confusing because they have the same icon. Pick that one. And so now you would have this triggered. Now this could be triggered off of you know a scheduled job. It could be scheduled off of a child flow. For this example, I'm just going to do one uh, when a record is created, updated, or deleted. One of my favorite things about the current environment connector is it gives you the Swiss Army knife that can of act of triggers, which can be create, update, delete, or any combination of the three. So I'm going to pick that one, and let's just for example sake, let's have this triggered off of uh, update of an opportunity. And so I can just type that in here. Um, and remember, it's it's plural, so you want to pick opportunities. Then you have scope. So scope is the ownership of the record and what triggers it. And so, for example, if I put it to user, it's only going to trigger off of, of opportunities that are owned by the user, by me, as the owner of the flow. I want to choose organization because that's kind of the system job that runs whenever anything, anything changes. So now here's where the fetch comes in. So I've got this when a record is created, updated, or deleted, it's opportunities that runs on update. So now I want to uh, do a new step, and this would be a list records. And so make sure you, you get the common data service current environment connector. And so from there, I want to choose the list records step. Now, the normal list records step uh, is, first of all, the normal list records step uses O data for its query. Nothing wrong with O data. O data is great, but it's limited. It can only be queried off of the single entity. So in this case, we need to base it off of a hierarchy of entities, basically filtering, getting users based on a related record. So, but we want to list user records because what you're going to need for your for your invite is you're going to need the user record. So let's call this users, and then. This is where the fetch will come in. All right, so I'm going to go users. Now I'm going to expand this out. Now, if you're familiar with the traditional dynamics or common data service connector, you know you'd have the filter query, which is based on OData. Now we've got this thing called fetch XML. So a little background for those of you who may not know. Fetch XML is the query language that Common Data Service and Dynamics 365 views are based on. It, I don't believe any other systems but Dynamics and CDS use fetch. It's, it's a XML-based query language. And so if I go into any model-driven app, I can hit the advanced find button. 
and launch the advanced find dialog. This then lets me, so I could build something like this, and this is what I would envision to do. So first of all, you would search for users and then filter it off of related board members. And in this case, I'm doing the owner. If you had a custom relationship, you could base it off of that user relationship. But then keep in mind that the board members has the lookup to opportunity. I don't need to go down the next level to filter this off of opportunity because ultimately what I want is a generic query that I can build to dynamically pass the value of the opportunity. And so in this case, I could put just pick any opportunity and could uh, go from there. Uh, and then from there, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, so this would give, give us a list of users specific to that one, but we really just want the fetch query. So then you can hit download fetch XML here and you can download it. And that's going to download the fetch XML query. Now you could use this, but there's a couple reasons why this isn't my favorite way to do it. It's going to have things like the columns that you want and in, in, if you're building a view. And I don't need all these attribute names and things like that. So my favorite way to do it is using a tool called the XRM Toolbox. If you're not familiar with it, you can go to xrmtoolbox.com. And from there, you can uh, download the XRM Toolbox. So in the XRM Toolbox, one of the tools, and uh, let's give credit to Jonas Rapp for this because he's the mastermind behind it. Uh, so the Fetch XML Builder is the tool that you want. If you don't have it installed when you download the XM Toolbox, you, you may need to add it from the, from the plugin store that's in there. But once you have it in here, um, we can go basically build that same query. So I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to fetch and then I'm going to select my entity, which in this case I want to do, and you have to know the schema name. So I'm going to go to system user is the entity. And let's select that one. Click back there, then you'll see that. Do it. Here's where you have to do a couple steps. Now let's right click and go add a link entity. And this is where we, we link to the related um, related board members entity. So this entity would be um, Lindstrom board members. And then you need to choose how this is related. So in this case, this is related from the owner ID of the board member to the system user ID. And so once we have that, then what we want to do is want to add a filter. So I'm going to right click on here. and choose add filter. Then we wanna add a condition. Now let's add our condition. Now remember, we're just building the generic query and so we don't want it to, We it doesn't matter what opportunity ID we pick here, but we'll just go uh, the, op, the, the Lindstro opportunity ID equals and then generate the good. That's just a generic good. If I run this, this isn't going to return anything. But what this lets me do then is I can go to view, fetch XML, copy this fetch XML. And then I'm going to head back over to my, and then I'm going to head back over to my flow because now I've got everything that I need to put into the fetch XML query. So I'm going to paste that in. Now, um, what you'll notice here is this hard codes that value in. So what I want to do is copy this, but do it inside the quotation marks, uh, because again, I want the fetch needs to have a quote around the, um, around the GUID of the opportunity. So let's select this here. 
And now over here, let's opportunity. So we got our opportunity ID there. And there you see it's added this, the opportunity, good, just the dynamic link there. So what this is going to do is this is going to get the records that just have the user records that are linked to that opportunity via board member relationships. So now once we have that, then this is where it gets pretty easy. And again, it depends on whether you want it to send one invite to everybody or you want it to have an individual invite for each person. I'm gonna assume you want an individual one per person. And again, I'll tell you what you need to do if you want it for one for everybody. So then I would go new step and here's where you can use the Office 365 connector and go Office 365. And from here, there's this thing called add a, create an event. That's going to create an appointment and you can choose a calendar that you want this to go on. Uh, so if you have a shared calendar, you can have this go on that shared calendar um, or choose your calendar. You need to have access to whatever calendar you're going to use there and connect to this with whatever account you want. So if it's a system account or system calendar, you'd want to have it use that one. And then uh, for the subject, uh, enter your subject here. You could have it take values off of that opportunity if you want. Um, let's for, take, for example, I think topic is a field on the opportunity. So yeah, you could have the meeting be the topic, put your start time, your end time. And uh, again, all that could be dynamically calculated based on whatever logic you want. This is where you put your attendees in. Now, so this is where you're going to want to probably do you know, a couple of things. One is, you know, it doesn't have any, any, any attendees here, but you can go add dynamic content. And from here, keep in mind, it's got to be an email address. So you could choose the primary email address here. And uh, so that's going to, for each opportunity, it's going to create an event. If you wanted this to be a, if you wanted this to be a single string with all of them, what I'd recommend you do is initialize a variable and then inside the apply to each, have it append that variable with the, with the people. Maybe make the first attendee you in that, in that variable. So the initial one is your email address. And then for every other one, when you update the variable, put semicolon email address. And that'll bring, build a string of all the additional attendees separated by semicolon because that, that, that field needs to have all the addresses separated by it. But in this case, what this would do is create an individual invite for each one. So you really could go either way there. So this is Joel Lindstrom. I hope that that has answered your questions. Please continue to use the Power Users Forum. I find it's a great way to kind of get a workout and going through you know, what people are seeing and great scenarios. So thanks for submitting your question.